Ever wondered what really protects a massive alternator deep inside a power plant when something goes wrong inside its windings? Not fuses, not circuit breakers alone. There's a powerful intelligent system guarding it, and today you're going to understand it like never before. Welcome to Electrology, where electrical engineering isn't just theory, it's a complete visual and conceptual experience. In this video, we'll break down differential protection of alternators, one of the most reliable systems to detect and isolate internal faults in a generator. Make sure you stick around till the end. We'll uncover how the system works with modern numerical relays, and there's a lot of clarity waiting for you in the visuals. And hey, if you're here to learn and grow, give this video a like, drop your questions or thoughts in the comments, and share this with your study group or colleagues. It helps the channel reach more learners like you. Let's begin. The most widely used protection system for stator winding faults in alternators is the differential protection, which follows the circulating current principle. In this protection scheme, currents at the two ends of the protected section, that is, the stator winding, are compared. Under normal operating conditions, these currents remain equal, but in the event of a fault inside the protected section, they become unequal. This difference in current is passed through a relay which then operates to isolate the faulty section. This type of protection is also called the Mertz-Price Circulating Current Scheme. Now, have a look at the schematic shown on the screen. It represents a three-phase alternator protected by differential protection. On each phase, R, Y and B, we place two identical current transformers, one on the neutral side and one on the terminal side. These CTs monitor the current entering and leaving the stator windings. The secondaries of each CT set are connected in star, and both star points are joined using a four-core pilot cable. This ensures that each pair of CTs has an independent circulating path, allowing accurate current comparison. Under normal conditions, the secondary currents cancel each other out, so no current flows through the relay coils. But when a fault happens, this balance is disturbed. The difference in current flows through the relay coils, which then activate the tripping mechanism to isolate the alternator. The relay coils, one for each phase, are also connected in a star configuration, with the neutral point tied to the CT common point. Each outer end of the relay coils connects to its respective pilot wire, the pilot wires are connected between equipotential points in the system, ensuring equal voltage and no current flow through the relays under healthy conditions. But the moment a fault occurs, this symmetry is broken. The imbalance results in current flowing through the relay coil corresponding to the faulty phase. These are electromagnetic relays, designed to act instantaneously to trip the breaker and clear the fault as quickly as possible. Now, let's discuss how this works during faults. Suppose an earth fault occurs on phase R. Due to insulation breakdown, current will now flow through the fault and reach the ground via the earthing resistance. Because of this, the currents in CT1 and CT2 for phase R will become unequal. The difference in these currents will flow through the relay coil R1, which then activates the trip circuit, isolating the alternator. Let's take another case. A short circuit fault occurs between phases Y and B. In this situation, short circuit current circulates via the neutral connection. CTs in the Y and B phases now detect unequal currents, and the difference flows through relay coils R2 and R3, closing their contacts and tripping the breaker. This way, any interturn, line-to-line -line or line-to-earth fault inside the protected zone can be effectively detected and isolated. Although the example we've just discussed uses electromagnetic relays in modern power systems, we typically use numerical relays for protection. In these systems, the secondary outputs from the current transformers, CT1 and CT2, are fed directly into the relay. This relay continuously monitors the incoming current values from both ends of the alternator winding. If it detects a difference, meaning a differential current above the relay's set threshold, it instantly sends a trip signal to isolate the alternator by opening the circuit breaker. Numerical relays offer improved accuracy 
faster operation, self-diagnostics, and communication capabilities compared to older electromagnetic relays, making them the preferred choice in most high-voltage installations today. Now, here's a critical practical detail often overlooked, the role of balancing resistances. The pilot cables that connect the current transformers and relays may not always have the same electrical characteristics, especially in large installations where the CTs are located at physically distant points. Because of this, the impedance of the wiring on each side can differ, causing unbalanced circulating currents even under healthy operating conditions. This could lead to false operation of the differential relay. To prevent this, balancing resistors are introduced into the circuit. These resistors are connected on the side with lower impedance to equalize the total resistance of both pilot cable paths. By ensuring that both CT secondary circuits face the same total impedance, balancing resistors maintain symmetry, reduce error current, and stabilize relay operation. This technique is essential in maintaining the reliability and accuracy of differential protection in real-world systems. Despite all this, differential protection has one key limitation. There's a small portion of the winding near the neutral end that might remain unprotected. This happens because the voltage developed across a fault in that region may not be enough to drive sufficient current through the circuit to operate the relay, especially when the earthing resistance is high. So, even if a fault occurs near the neutral, the relay might not sense it. For this reason, most protection systems aim to protect only about 80 to 85% of the winding length. The remaining 15 to 20% near the neutral is considered low risk because of better insulation and lower voltage stress. This is a practical compromise made in real-world systems. So that was a deep dive into differential protection of alternators. From working principles, schematic arrangement, real fault operation, all the way to its implementation using modern numerical relays. I hope you found this explanation detailed and helpful. If you did, don't forget to like, share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to Electrology. And here's something you can do to support Electrology. Click the thanks button just below this video to show your appreciation. Or, if you want exclusive content, early video previews, or behind-the-scenes insights, hit the join button and become a channel member. Your support helps this channel grow and keeps the content free and high quality for everyone. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned, stay curious, and keep learning with Electrology.